Bear Bryant's march to history had taken him from Maryland to Kentucky to Texas, and finally home to Alabama. It was fitting then that the win that gave him the record was a 28-17 victory over arch rival Auburn. He did not use it to market Paul Bryant. It meant more to him that it was done at the University of Alabama without putting a name on it. It was an appropriate time, and I was getting damn tired of waiting on it. <laughs> there wasn't much left for Bryant to accomplish when he began his 38th year of coaching in 1982. Revered and respected by his players and his peers, he had long since reached the top of his profession. But he was also nearing 70 in a young man's game and his opponents jumped at the chance to take advantage of his failing health and diminishing desire. Recruiting, particularly here in the South, is very competitive. And there's no question that when a coach gets up in age, questions comes up, is he going to be there for a player's entire four years at a university? Two days before National Signing Day, we ran this story with a big picture of Bryant. It looked like the craters of the moon, all the wrinkles and the lines in his face. Pat Dye later told me that he got 50 copies of that article, and he had somebody send them anonymously to every one of his top recruits, including Bo Jackson. I won't say that's a lie, but that's inaccurate. You didn't have to use it against him. Kids are smart enough to know when a guy walks into your house and he's 68. You ain't got to be Einstein to figure out that he was having a few health problems, too. There were pill bottles on his windowsill behind his desk. I said, where all those pills go? Oh, man, I got pills for my kidney and pills for my liver. It's no secret he lived in a robust manner. Yeah, he loved to party. There's no doubt that Bryant had a problem with alcohol. And in 1978, he actually checked himself into a clinic. For some time now, the bear had been thinking he'd had enough. He made his decision on a late November afternoon in Birmingham in a game against Auburn, the type of game that had once stirred his heart. The last couple of seconds on the clock, I scored the winning touchdown. It was said there was poor Coach Bryant while these Auburn people were acting like they had just discovered the fountain of youth. It was like a Shakespearean tragedy. He asked everybody in the family, do you think I ought to retire? And I told him no. He said, Mark, I'm just tired. I'm just really tired. It comes time in every profession when you need to hang it up. At that time, it's come for me as head football coach at the University of Alabama. On December 29, 1982, in the Liberty Bowl against Illinois, Paul Bear Bryant took the field for the last time as the coach of the Crimson Tide. The game went back and forth, and we had gone ahead, and it looked like this might be their last series. And one of my defensive ends came from the backside and sacked the quarterback. And of course, in his excitement, he jumped straight up in the air. Coach grabbed my arm and he said, haven't you coached him to lay on that quarterback when we're trying to run the clock? With less than a minute to go in his final game, oh, he's always coaching. After nearly a half century of football, Bear Bryant was finished with the sport that had defined his life. Many years before he retired, somebody asked him, if you retired, coach, what would you do? He said, I'll crunk in a week. He was off by a month. Former University of Alabama football coach Paul Bear Bryant died today of a heart attack. He had been stable and had been talking to nurses immediately prior to this attack. All measures were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at 1.30 p.m. At Flags in Alabama with half staff. Devastating. Awful. Coach Bryant's dead. He's so dang tough. He just didn't think about Coach Bryant dying. Here's God, and God can't die, but uh, he did. Mayor Harmon was very composed. Her interest was that the funeral would be something that would be dignified, it would be worshipful.
At the conclusion of the service, a hearse was stationed to receive the casket. And when we moved out onto the steps, I never heard such a noise. I hardly was able to identify what it was. It sounded almost like thunder. There must have been 200 photographers and the shutters of taking the picture of us coming down those steps is a memory that I will always cherish. We were at the church. They went by the football field and they stopped just for a minute. Of course, that tore me apart. People stood on both sides of the street, shoulder to shoulder. There must have been scores of police vehicles and state troopers to direct traffic all the way to Birmingham. The outpouring of love and affection from all over it was awesome. It was wonderful. At every overpass, there were hundreds of people standing in reverence and in honor of Coach Bryant. was the first time it hit me how many people loved him besides me. I've never experienced anything like the reverence for Coach Bryant. And it's still there. I'd walk out of my office and there was Paul Bryant Boulevard and it was right beside Paul Bryant Conference Center and there's Paul Bryant Museum, Paul Bryant Stadium and Paul Bryant Athletic Dark. Bear Bryant left much more than his name at Alabama. In passing into legend, he defined a university and a state and created one of the most noble traditions in the history of American sports. He was as rugged as the Marlboro Man, as tough as John Wayne, and yet there was not a phony bone in his body. Alabama people respected that. He was the antidote to Alabama's inferiority complex because Alabama was number 48 in education, number 49 in highways, and number 50 in civil rights. But in football, Alabama was number one. He had a lot of faults. What great men don't. But when you cut through it all, he's still the greatest football coach ever. End of story. I think he would want to be remembered for him, not how many games he won. But how many lives he touched, how many people he helped. We should all be so lucky as to have somebody close to Coach Brack cross our paths in our lifetime. Bryant was the embodiment of the American dream. Growing up in poverty, insecure by the end of his life, through hard work, perseverance, dedication, to become the most dominant figure in his profession. That's a confirmation of the very idea of America. The Bear, the legend of Coach Paul Bryant, is sponsored by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. America Online Vision 7.0, there's never been a better time to get online. And by Honda, this holiday it's gifts that go time on motorcycles and ATVs at your Honda dealer. I don't think I ever saw anybody's love as much as my brother was loved by so many people. Bear Bryant is everywhere you look because he is a part of what we learned. He's a part of our history, a part of our heritage. People trusted him. They sent their kids to the university because he was a man of high integrity. He acted as a parent. He guided. It made a difference. I guess you could call him the father of Alabama. Never have I ever taken anything that the man gave me and been led awry. To put it briefly, his body may be gone, but I think the spirit of Coach Wright will live forever. And he still stands for the goal line post. We're mighty proud that we had him for what time we did. He was a great man.